Salutations, good people. Welcome to Upstate SC Living. Whether it's real estate or local restaurant reviews, I've got you covered. I'm Josh Oglesby, your Upstate Realtor with Real Broker LLC. And today we're talking about the top five beaches to visit out of the upstate of South Carolina. Now, all of the beaches that I'm going to list today are going to be within about three and a half to five and a half hours of an average drive, depending on where you're located at in the upstate. Now, South Carolina's coast stretches for 187 miles along the Atlantic, so there's plenty to choose from here. I will warn you that some of these ratings are based on part preference and experience and part just how popular they are in general. Growing up in South Carolina my whole life, I've gotten a lot of feedback when it comes to beaches and coastal living in general. Now, as you can tell, Myrtle Beach is not going to be on this list. Now, Josh, why in the world would you put together a list of top five beaches in South Carolina and not include the infamous Myrtle Beach? Well, if you're a native of South Carolina, or even a native of North Carolina, you've probably heard its nickname, Dirty Myrtle. However, Myrtle Beach used to be a much desired place to go to because it used to be super family friendly. There were tons of attractions to check out and it was just an overall wonderful, beautiful place to visit. However, over the years, it has deteriorated a bit. Now it's turned into more of a spring break, summer break palooza for, I can't even put it on young people. It's the older folks too. Everybody be going crazy. And due to the droves and droves of people, it's made a lot of these attractions that were once desired to become not exactly attractive. I've heard too many stories of friends and friends of friends, and even experienced it a little bit myself 12 years ago to be able to recommend such a place. However, if you do decide to take a trip into the mouth of hell, I recommend bringing a pair of steel-toed boots in fear from stepping on a needle. Coming in at number five, I will preface this by saying not all myrtles are created equal. That's right, the further north you get from Myrtle Beach, the quieter it gets, and eventually you will land in the wonderful, desirable North Myrtle Beach. Now, I personally have family that live there year-round, so I can vouch and say this is a wonderful place for visitors or locals. It's got that old-school Myrtle Beach feel without all the noise. It's a wonderful place to take the family. There's plenty of things to do for the family, and it's not gonna come with a massive price tag like some of the other beaches that you may encounter in South Carolina. Besides, if you've just gotta check out Myrtle Beach for its history, I recommend dipping down to Broadway at the beach. There's plenty to do there. It's iconic, and at the end of the day, you don't have to stay. You can drive back to your safe abode in North Myrtle. Coming in at number four is the ever so quiet and private Fripp Island. However, if price is an issue, you may want to look somewhere else. Like I said, it's extremely private, but you definitely pay for the privacy. And that's why it's my number four and not a little bit higher. I personally took a trip back in October of 2021 and it was incredible. It was one of the best beach experiences I've ever had. However, with this seclusion does come a little bit further driving distance when it comes to wanting to explore and get out. But again, if you want privacy and you don't want to be bothered, go to Fripp. One of the coolest things about Fripp is the wildlife that you're going to see and possibly even encounter. I know that may frighten some of you, but when I tell you that along the main strip, you're going to see more deer than you are cars, I'm not lying. I've never been able to walk up to a deer and actually pet it before, but I was able to do that multiple times on Fripp Island, which can be really cool for the family. And not worry about getting bucked or gutted. Coming in at number three is the appropriately nicknamed The Family Beach, Surfside Beach. Sticking with peace and quiet, this place screams family friendly. You're just as likely to see a golf cart on the main strip as you are an actual car. If you want to grab an ice cream and take a stroll down the Garden City Pier, you can do that as well. Heck, if you even want to go to a carnival, just follow the big glow of the giant Ferris wheel and they've got everything that you need when it comes to a fair. If some good local seafood is what you're after, then I'm gonna recommend you go over to Sarah J's. You can look at the marsh while you enjoy a nice dinner, and you're not gonna leave unhappy when it comes to the quality of the food. Just south of Myrtle Beach, if a good slice of Americana is what you're looking for, I highly recommend Surfside and Garden City. 
Coming in at number two is Isle of Palms in Charleston, South Carolina. Known for its beaches and places to eat, it's yet again another family-friendly place with good quality family resorts. A really cool characteristic of Isle of Palms is that you can see plenty of sea turtles if you're looking for them. Now you can check out sea turtles in various coastal locations in South Carolina, but if you visit the Isle of Palms, your chances of seeing one are going to go way up. And if you want to break out for a little bit, Isle of Palms is only 18 miles from downtown Charleston. I've personally never been to Isle of Palms, but I don't have enough hands to count on how many times I've heard friends and family come out of Isle of Palms not saying it was a good time, but it was a fantastic time and it was just a wonderful place overall to go to. And finally, coming in at number one is good old Folly Beach. If you've heard the term low country, when it comes to South Carolina, you're definitely going to get the low country lifestyle vibe in Folly. The Folly Beach is six miles in length and according to a 2020 census, the population was about 2,500. The Folly Beach Pier itself stretches along 1,000 feet out into the ocean. So if fishing is something that you're after, I would recommend the Folly Beach Pier. If you need a place to try out to eat, I recommend Low Life. Going along with that low country lifestyle, the appropriately named Low Life will give you a wonderful indoor-outdoor bar and grill experience. Just ask any of the locals there, they're probably going to tell you low life should be one of the places you hit before you leave. I personally remember visiting Folly a couple years ago in the month of June and being on the beach and while there was a lot of people on the beach, you never felt crowded because there was so much space between you and the next group of people. I truly enjoyed my time in Folly and can't wait to go back. That's going to do it for my top 5 list when it comes to beaches to visit out of upstate South Carolina. It's my hope that perhaps it helped you make up your mind on what to do with your spring or summer plans because it's going to be here before you know it. If you did find this video useful or it did help you make that decision just a little bit easier, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more real estate and upstate South Carolina content in the future. Did you agree with my list? Did you disagree with my list? Let me know in the comments below. And to all you Myrtle Beach fans, I'm so sorry. And if there is anything that I can personally do to help you when it comes to real estate in South Carolina, or if you just need some knowledge about South Carolina, I've got you covered. You can find out how to contact me in the description of this video. I've been Josh Oglesby with Real Broker LLC and Upstate SC Living. Until next time, remember to enjoy yourselves.